You can't just bring a library with a whole new paradigm and convince people to use it out of the blue. But you can bring a new library that delivers value right away and wait for it to spread like a wildfire. So let's look at few functionalities we've used or seen others use to introduce a first functional dependency into a company. We'll use Scala and Cats in the examples, but it should be somewhat applicable to other libraries and languages. Has it ever happened to you that someone gives you a map and then another one and you have to smoosh them together? For example, maps of scores across different rounds. And if you try something straightforward, like concatenating these maps with plus plus, the values for the same keys are gonna come from the second map. For example, for B team, the first round was one and the second round was three, but the combined result is gonna be three because it's from the second round. If we don't want this simple override for the values, but we want to combine them instead, for example, in this case, add the numbers from different rounds together, we can do this by hand with something like this, with a simple left fold, we get a values from one map and slowly add them to another one, if, which is kind of a bit verbose, but kind of works. Or we can use cats and combine them together using the operator or using the function with the name combine. In either case, we get B team with four, which is three plus one from different rounds. The combine function merges two maps and adds values for the same keys. On top of that, we can use it with multiple maps. We can add round one to round two and to round three. Or use combine all, which does the same thing for the list of rounds. The best part is combine knows how to combine a lot of things. For example, we can combine maps with lists for values. For example, for A team, we had the list with 1 and 2, and in another round we had list with just 20, and as a result, this list with 1, 2, and 20, and the same for different teams. Or we can even use maps with maps with lists for values. For example, if each round is a map, we just use above, and then we combine them for different rounds, we get a combination with a map of maps and lists. Sorry, I'm just getting carried away. Uh, it's simple, but quite convenient, and of course it doesn't magically work for every type of data and every use case, you must use supported data types and collections, associative operations, and know what other biases exist. Like in other words, why does it sum the integer and doesn't multiply them, for instance? It takes time to get used to it and figure it out, but when we do and our team does, we get a powerful tool that we can use in a wide variety of use cases, even to multiply integers when we need it. We've all seen these forms that validate one thing at a time, like you fill it in and then it says that there is an error and you fix it and then it says there is another error and so on. Luckily, we can use validated from cats to avoid frustrating our clients. If we started with a form validation that uses either that short circuits, in other words, fail fast, for example, to validate a name, validate a score, we have a validation for name that checks that the name is not empty, that the score must be greater than zero, then having both invalid name and a score returns only one error, the first one, which is not the best. However, if we replace this with validated and we use errors instead of error and validated instead of either, then we get both errors. Because we don't want to short circuit on the first error, we don't and can't use four comprehensions. We use map n from cats instead, which we'll come back to later. So we can only construct a score if both the name and score numbers are valid. And if any validation fail, we accumulate the error. One, two, both, none, whatever. And for the record, in real life, list isn't the most efficient collection for concatenation like that. So we use something more proper like non-empty chain from cats. This suffix function just means that it stands for non-empty chain and EC. Strings are also not the best for errors. Anyways, let's move on. The validated data type is a great tool for handling validation, which we can use when we need to accumulate errors instead of failing fast and reporting one error at a time. Nobody wants frustrated users, right? So it's another easy win. In previous snippets, we used a few extension methods from cats to convert types into validated. It was valid, invalid, valid NEC, invalid NEC. Those are quite simple, but convenient. So instead of writing wrapping stuff in the constructor by hand, which is kind of convenient, but on top of that, cats provide extension methods for options and others as well. A little syntax change that does not justify a whole new dependency. Sure. However, there is one more thing to it. These functions return widen type. I like the standard constructors. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it still affects type inference too much in Scala 3 and, and stuff, but back in the day, it was pretty annoying. 
Another function we've seen is map n. It's roughly about smooshing tuple values. We've seen with tuple of validated values and constructed a validated score. We can do the same with options. For example, if we have some round score with more fields, we can use map n to apply or construct the round score out of optional values. For example, concatenating strings, a, b, c, we can combine them together into a, b, c. If one of them is missing, we get an none as a result. We can also do arithmetic operations, just more multiplication, I guess, 1, 2, 10, it's going to be 20, and so on. But probably the most useful is still instantiating case classes. The last thing we'll cover is the traverse function. You might have seen or used the traverse or sequence to go from many futures to one. You can use future sequence to get one future that returns a list of integers instead of having to juggle them separately. With cats, we can traverse and sequence many other things. For example, if we have a list of scores that we need to validate, we can use traverse. And if there is one invalid score, we get a failure. We fail. If all the scores are valid, we successfully get the list of valid scores. Or if we already have a list of either's, we can convert them into an either with a list of success, right, of a list of integer. If it sounds boring, imagine if you have a list of responses from different services and you want to fail if one of them fails. As soon as one fails, you know that you don't have to wait for the rest and so on. And once again, it applies to many things, not just either's and list. At some point when it clicks, it becomes a very powerful tool. While we're in the topic, another convenient function is separate which separates the values into lefts and rights. We have a list of either's, which is either an error or an integer, and we separate them into errors on the left and a list of integers on the right. There are many more convenient functions and concepts. So a lot of ways to tease and introduce a function library to the code base. A reminder, just in case, try not to bring completely unfamiliar to your libraries to your workplace. It's not sustainable.